to obey God's word. And in fact, we kind of summed it up, Ron summed it up, but a home of faith will obey God's word or will obey the word of God. And so in that, there's this, there's this tension as we go through this foundation series of we don't want it to just be theological mind knowledge. Like we could stand up here and just fill your head with a bunch of stuff, but the reality is we want it to be taken home and to build a home on a solid foundation and what that looks like. And so we, we realize that with a new vision, as Ron talked about last week, of building homes of faith, we need a solid foundation. And one piece of that foundation, one key to that foundation, is God's Word and obeying the Word of God in our homes and our marriages and our relationships and our workplace and so on and so forth. And today, we want to talk about another key uh, to that foundation. But before we do that, I, I want to talk about this foundation idea. Like, I don't know if you know this or not, but it's just a full disclosure. I build wine cellars. Some of you are like, the pastor builds wine cellars. Hmm. All right, so I build wine cellars, all right? But the first thing that I do when I show up on a job site is I, I talk to the guy whose house it is, of course. But like once I, I go to start, the first thing I do is I grab a tape measure and a level, and I go into the room that the cellar is supposed to be put in. And what I do is I measure the room to make sure it, it's, the specs are the same as what I got. And I throw my levels on the floor to see how bad the builder screwed up. Basically is what I do, all right? So I need to know where, where I have to level and shim this rack so that it's perfectly level. In other words, I need to know the foundation so that when I start to build, it's something worth having. Like it, it's something that somebody wants to pay for. And so I have to know that foundation. I have to know what the builder did. I need to know what I need to do. So the first thing I do is I check the foundation. And that's what we want to do this morning as well. We want to talk about God this morning. And you're like... Wow, that's a big topic. We're going to talk about God. God is the found, key, another key foundation that we want to build our homes, our faith on. And you're like, wow, that's impressive. So, so up here, like, let's read like, what we believe as a church. The members of this church have all agreed to a doctrinal statement about God. So if you could put that up here, let, let's read that. Um, we believe in one God. Right? There's one God. Creator of all things. That God created Everything. How important Genesis 1-1 is. In the beginning, God created. In some ways, the entire Bible rests on that one phrase. Infinitely perfect and eternally existing. So God is infinite. He's eternal. He's perfect. He'll always be here. He'll always be around. And three persons. God the Father. God the Son, Jesus Christ. God the Holy Spirit or the Holy Ghost. One God, three distinct ways of manifesting himself. He's infinite. He's perfect. He's eternal. He's all saying. That, that's what we believe about God here at the sanctuary. That's what we've all signed to. That's what we will, we will go, we will die on the hill for. That is God. That is one God, three persons, all of those things. But that, that's still pretty, like, that's a lot to talk about God this morning. And, and in some ways, like, God is, he's still, it's still even more. Because we could talk about, like, God is all powerful. And, like, there's so many layers to it, right? Or, or God is, is perfect. Or God is omnipresent, like in all places present at one time. And, and, or God is, is a provider. He's a providing Jehovah Jireh, Jehovah Rapha. Like he, and then we can just continue, like God is, is that. And, and then th this is all one God, but he, he has so many different attributes and characteristics. And, and his character is so many different things. It's like, well, we're going to talk about God in the next 30 minutes. What, what are we going to talk about? How are we going to cover God? in one Sunday morning and, and have you build a foundation for your home in the next 30, 35 minutes. Well, this morning, I want to talk about this. The core or the center or what I believe as I studied this week is what God has been just showing me is all of these things could not be true if this one thing is not true. This one piece, this one foundation as in we're in the foundation series is not true. These things would not, in fact, would not be true of God. When I was a kid, I grew up in Virginia. Some of you know that. Um, I loved Virginia. In fact, I loved everything about my life up till I was 10. <laughs> so in some way. But I, like, I loved Virginia. But you have to understand, like, I, it's all I knew as well. Like, I, I love my friends. I had three of the closest friends, Steve, Bennett, and Christian. And we did everything together. We were attached at the hip. We loved each other. You could not find us on a day or a weekend apart. Like, we might not all four be together, but two or three or one or two. Like, there was some combination of us hanging out. We, we played soccer together on the same teams. We played 
um, flag football and this like backyard football together. We went dirt biking. We did, went to the pool. Everything. We did everything together. We went to the same church. We were in the same homeschool group. So we didn't have cool names like co-op. We had homeschool group, okay? So we went to homeschool group together because I was homeschool. Anyway, and we'll go on. And then so like, yeah, so like we did everything together. One of our favorite things to do together was um, every other Friday night or every third Friday night, there was a, an open air orchestra and uh, we would go under the Chesapeake Bay Tunnel because it's a tunnel, not a bridge. It goes under the Chesapeake Bay and it comes up on kind of like a, I don't, it's not an island because it's not all alone, but anyway, it's a peninsula maybe. And there's like an open air orchestra and our parents would go and listen to like Bach and Beethoven and we didn't care because we were nine and 10 and who cares about Bach and Beethoven? We cared more about names like Joe Montana and Dan Marino at the time. And we would go play football for like three hours on the beach, like on the bay front. Just, you don't sweat because the breeze is just coming in. And it was a great, we had a great time. I loved everything about it. Our home, we had a huge home. Some guy at our church rented us this huge home with like a half acre of land. And it was, a, it was amazing for a kid. We could run around in our backyard. We didn't have to go to the park or anything like that. And then the other thing I loved about it is there's this place called Gettysburg pretty close. And like cobblestone uh, streets and my dad would always get like this red and this black licorice from this one store and it was just the best and like we would spend our time walking around Gettysburg in horse drawn carriage. I loved everything about it. It was amazing. And one day my dad walked into our room and he said, we're moving to Illinois. And I said, why would we move? No. <laughs> I was, we're moving to Illinois. He got a job at Benedictine University and he's like, I, I mean, we got to work. I got to, we have to move. I was 10. It stunk bad. By that fall, six to eight months later, we, we were right here in Bolingbrook, Illinois. And we've been, we've lived here ever since. And suddenly, I found myself with no friends. No Christian, no Christian friends. No non-Christian friends, honestly, just no friends. Like, no homeschool group, no church that I loved, no Awanas that I loved, no football, no open-air orchestra where the bay breeze blows off, like, the cement down by the lakefront. You can't play football down there. Like, none of it. Like, I had nothing. No, nothing. And what else said, like, seemingly what happened is I had no God, too. I accepted Christ when I was four back in Virginia, and, and life was great, but as soon as we moved and things began to get hard, I began to have a lot of questions about who God was and, and how we interacted in my life personally. So much so that every, pretty much every week I tell my mom, I'm saving my allowance to buy a bus ticket and I'm going back home. With or without you, Mom, you can choose, but I'm saving my allowance to buy a bus ticket and go back home. I was, and I did, buy, I did not buy the bus ticket, but I had enough too. just never had the guts to actually go through with it. Um, but the other thing that I did, two or three times a week, I would tell my mom I'm going to the park. Instead of going to the park, I would cross the bridge to go to the park, and I would go back, and I would sit under the bridge, and I would just daydream about my time back in Virginia about life back at home, about what my friends were doing back at home. And it, it eventually would end up here. I'd be sitting under the bridge, and I'd just start to cry. And I'd be like, God, I just want to go home. Is that too much to ask? I, I just want to go hang out with my friends. I don't want the newest toys. I don't want the coolest clothes. I don't want the, the hippest stuff, God. I just want to go home. God, why, why can't I go home? And day after day, and week after week, and month after month, I, I did that until it got too cold to go sit under that bridge. And, and, I, and at a time in my life, at that time, God began to become very distant to me. Now you could say it's my fault or God's fault, but, but the reality is that at a time where, where I wanted God to come close and to hold me and, and to comfort me, I felt that God was becoming more and more distant, more and more aloof, more and more disinterested, more and more not caring about my life, my personal situation, what I was walking through at the time. And in some ways, that, that move, the move I call it, uh, and those times under that bridge began a period in my life, an eight-year period in my life where, where I walked away from the Lord and, and me and God were very, very distant from one another. Now, I'm not naive enough to think that you've all sat under a bridge in tears, <laughs> but I know that at some point in your life, at some point in my life, Pretty much everyone in this room has felt that God is distant. I know that you've felt that God is distant. Because I, I know that, that you've either, you've gone through a financial situation that, that you can't control. And your, your savings and your, and your checking and your 401k, like you know those clocks they have online that like spin so fast, it's like how the government, how fast the government spends money? 
like, it's a like that fast. Like that's what your 4OK is doing backwards though. It's like down to zero as fast as it can do. Like that's what's been happening in the last couple of years. Your savings and your checking, and it's, I mean, gone, right? Or your kids, like you love your kids and you love your spouse, but the last couple of years or maybe even the last couple of weeks or maybe yesterday, like it's just tough relationally. It's tough. And God has seemed distant and like he doesn't interact in, in those relationships or in, in your personal in your personal life. And, and, and some of you have been laid off and laid off and laid off. And you're like, God, what's up with that? Like, God, I, I'm not talking like wants here. I'm not going to go buy the Hummer. I just want to be able to feed my family. I just want to be able to make it. And I keep getting laid off and I can't get a job. And I keep getting laid off. Some of you, some of you are in high school. You just started high school or just started junior high. And like you go into school and you're like, I just want one good Christian friend. Like, I just need one solid friend at school that I can count on, that I can bank on, that can, that can back me up. And it hasn't happened yet. And we're, we're eight, ten weeks into school. And you're like, what is up, God? Like, why are you so distant? I don't want the world. I don't want everything. I just want one solid friend, one solid person that, that I can walk through school with, walk through life with, and do things. Some of you are in, have been or are in ministry. And you've labored for years and for years to get the ministry to grow or to get it to go. And you're like, it's not happening. And you're like, what is going on? Like, I'm doing God's work here and it's just not growing. Or maybe worse than that is you, you did get it to grow and, and you stepped out or you, or you stepped down or, or God called you somewhere else and you look back at that church or that ministry and it's completely crumbled. And you're like, where is God in that? Like, what's up with that? God seems so distant in that situation. Well, why, can't, why, didn't, why didn't he come close? And why didn't he, he wrap your arms around that, that ministry, that, that situation, those people that, that took over for me? And what does all that look like in God's being distant? Some of you have spent years, um, years and years investing in people. And those people have failed morally. And you feel like that was, that was a waste of time. Or what was that all about? Some of you have spent years financially supporting something only to find out that your funds that you date gave were were grossly misappropriated and misused. Some of you just feel like God is distant because right now you're going through a dry spell in life. Your prayers seem pointless. Your faith is on the rocks. God's word seems dry and uninteresting and, and unable to speak into your personal life. Some of you have obeyed God every step of the way and it hasn't turned out the way you wanted it to. It doesn't look like what you thought it would look like. And you're like, what, where is God in that? Like, why is he so distant? Why is he so disinterested in, in my, personal, my personal life? Some of you, some of you here's what's happened for, for some of us, is that, that we've taken the failings and the disconnectedness and, and, the, and the unable to do connect of our earthly father, and we've projected it onto our heavenly father. And so God has never really been a God that comes close because it was never really modeled for us. We never really even knew what a father that came close looked like. And so how, how could God be a father that comes close? And we've just taken that, our earthly father has done, and we've projected it onto a heavenly.